All right, guys, welcome back to our second episode of our Lecture One series. And our topic for this presentation is the organization of the human body. And in that discussion, we'll basically see what is the organization to all multicellular um, animals. So let us get started. <clears throat> All right, so to begin with the largest level of organization, we have, of course, the whole organism. So for humans, that's the whole body. So we know that. And you know some of this already. Your body is made up of organ systems. There are 11 of these, which I'll be introducing to you as we go through our presentation. And from there, then, we see that our organ systems are composed of organs, and our organs are composed of tissues. And our tissues are discussed um, in our lab components. So these are chapter four of your textbook and then primarily focused on it in lab and then mentioned as we go through each of our organ systems in the lecture part of the course. When we talk about our tissues for the body, there are four main types. The first one I like to introduce is the epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissues, I like to describe them as lining the body because you're gonna see that the outside of your skin is composed of epithelial tissue but then so is the inside of your mouth, right? So the outside and the inside of your body is lined with epithelial tissue. So this tissue is gonna have two really important functions if you wanna be super general. One is to, of course, provide a protective barrier. So it's gonna, you know, if it's lining the outside or the inside of the body, then it's going to prevent anything from having access or crossing. But the second function is to allow material to cross. So for instance, you breathe in air so that oxygen can move from your lung to your capillaries and from your capillaries out to the rest of your tissue. So obviously, oxygen gas is having to move across the wall of the alveoli, the air sacs in the lungs, and across the wall of the capillary, and then again, again across the wall of the capillary and out to the surrounding tissues. So it's epithelial tissue that's allowing for that selective movement of material across uh, some of these different cavities and um, vessels and so forth in the body. The next tissue that um, I want to mention is your connective tissue. This is the tissue that is pretty much supporting the body. This includes the bone and the cartilage and the blood. The ligaments and tendons are composed of connective tissues. We will see that connective tissue is, you know, surrounding each of our organs, making it at once a separate structure while also tying it into the rest of the body. We'll see connective tissue is going to fill up the spaces and gaps between um, organs are adipose or fat tissues, a good example of connective tissue, areolar as well. Our muscle tissue, this includes skeletal tissue, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. This tissue is modified for movement or contraction. If you want to sort of do a super generic like cut of the body, we would see that you would cut through epithelial tissue, connective, muscle, connective epithelial tissue as sort of just a super generic idea of the, the way that these tissues are organized in the body. And then you'd have your fourth type, which is your neural tissue running throughout. The neural tissue is of course composing your nerves, um, your brain and your spinal cord, so your nervous system. Those tissues are collections of cells that are working together for those specific functions. And cells are important because this is where we start to see the properties of life emerging. So this is the smallest functional unit of your body. The smallest living functional unit of your body is the cell. So we're gonna spend chapter three pretty much just talking about the cell. And then, you know, as we look at each of our body systems, we'll start by talking about what is the cell that's making up this um, organ, these tissues and so forth. And so we will um, constantly be referring back to the cells that are making up each of those body systems. And then we will see that those cells are composed of special molecules. So we do need to have a little bit of a chemistry discussion in this course. We'll be doing that with our next chapter, chapter two. And in order to understand molecules, we do need to understand atoms, which are the smallest units of matter. 
So atoms are, of course, coming together to form those molecules, which are coming together to make your cells, which are coming together to make your tissues, which are forming your organs, which form your organ systems, which collectively compose your whole body. So of course, in this case, we've been looking at it from the big picture down to the small picture in terms of our organization. Okay, so here we're looking at a nice little diagram taken from your textbook. And this diagram does a great job of giving us an overview of the body systems. We have a diagram and also a quick listing of the key organs that are found in each of these systems, as well as some descriptions of function. In this first chapter, you do need to have a basic general idea, um, being able to list all 11 body systems, being able to describe the primary structures and primary jobs of each of these systems. So we'll take some time to do that together. So let's start with our integumentary system. Integumentary system consists of your skin, your hair, your nails, and your glands. And that term gland is really a big, um, big descriptor, right? Because that includes sweat glands, and your sebaceous or oil glands, and even mammary glands um, would be listed in this um, particular uh, system, but really we talk about that more with reproduction. So here in integument, we'll talk mostly about sweat glands and sebaceous glands. I like to describe the job of the system as protection. We will see that, of course, the skin is forming the physical barrier, preventing things from gaining access to the body or things from the inside of the body getting out. We also see thermoregulation with both the hair, the layer of fat tissue that serves as insulation, the sweat glands. We see melanin um, production from those melanocytes of the skin, helping to protect from UV radiation. So we have quite a lot of ways that the integument is protecting the body. The second body system that we'll be talking about this semester is the skeletal system. And so this is including the bones, the cartilages, and the ligaments, which are the connective tissues connecting bone to bone that make up your skeleton. Your skeleton is really forming the framework for your body. So it um, is giving a place for muscles to attach to. So then it's leverage for those muscles to contract against. Um, we see the skeleton is protecting your soft tissue, so you have the cranial cavity protecting the brain and the thoracic cage protecting the heart and lungs. You have blood cells being formed in your lung bones. So we have quite a few jobs here. I like to summarize them as support. The next system that we'll look at is the skeletal muscle. Now these are the muscles attached to your skeleton, the muscles of the body that are moving the body. Um, and then we see that the structure called a tendon is what is attaching the muscle to the bone. So here I like to describe the job of this system as movement. Next, we have the nervous system. Now, the nervous system consists of the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. And I like to describe the job of the nervous system as communication, because a good communicator listens, processes, and then responds. And the nervous system does all that too. So it's gonna collect sensory information from both the inside and the outside of the body. There's gonna be processing of that information and then direction of responses. The endocrine system is our body system that produces our hormones. Our hormones are special chemical messengers that travel through the bloodstream. They have longer lasting, more widespread effects than the neurotransmitters used in the nervous system. So the endocrine system is the system producing our hormones. So we have special glands here, pituitary gland, hypothalamus, um, pancreas, adrenal glands. And then there are secondary glands such as your gonads that are involved um, here as well. And then functions um, of the hormones is also communication, just like nervous system. Notice the difference between these. Your nervous system communication is fast, 
right? That's your immediate response. And then your endocrine responses are more long-term. So these are, you know, take a little while to kick in, but then have a little bit of a longer uh, time frame. So think about the coordination of the development of your body from infancy through toddlerhood into teenage years into adulthood. That kind of long-term communication was orchestrated by hormones. But it can also be, you can also make the comparison between these systems. If you've ever been like driving down the road, playing some tunes, and then look up and realize, oh, I've got to slam on the brakes. There's cars stopped in front of me. You slam on the brake, super fast, and you're fine. You're safe. The car behind you is safe. The car in front of you is safe. No damage done. But you're still like, oh, you're still a little bit nervous. So that quick response of slamming on the brake and that increased alertness that happened when you realized there was an emergency, that is coming from the nervous system. But that also triggered a release of hormones, which is what's causing your heart rate to still be elevated for the next 10 minutes or so until you realize that you're really totally fine and the hormone basically moves through the system. Next, we will talk about the cardiovascular system. This system consists of your heart, your blood vessels, which include arteries and veins, and of course, your blood. Now, the real job of the cardiovascular system is to circulate your blood and whatever is in the blood. So that includes oxygen gas, that includes nutrients, that includes the hormones we were just talking about, right? Um, also, you have white blood cells that are important in protecting your body and acting as um, you know, defense system for the body. Um, and then waste removal. So any kind of carbon dioxide gas or metabolic waste would also be transported in the cardiovascular system. So I like to use the word transport as my key summary here. Okay, moving on to the lymphatic system. This is probably the one you're least familiar with. The lymphatic system is the system that you would think of as your immune system. So the lymphatic system has lymphocytes, which are your cells involved in your immune response. You also have a network of vessels called lymph vessels, which pretty much parallel your blood vessels. So anywhere you have a blood vessel, you're gonna expect lymphatic vessel right beside. Um, and so Israel's job is um, defense. And think about this as separate from protection. Protection prevents invasion. Defense is attacking once invasion has happened. So if you do have any pathogens invading, any damage to your tissue, then it's the lymphatic system that's going to be responsible for identifying, attacking, and removing um, those pathogens. Okay, next body system is respiratory. You know this one. Um, this is your nasal passageway, your trachea, your lungs. The job here is really to get oxygen gas into the body and carbon dioxide gas out of the body. But as part of that, we also see respiratory system is regulating the pH. Um, here I just summarize this as gas exchange. Okay, next we have our digestive system. So this starts with the mouth. You have the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. So the job of the digestive system is to get that food into the body, digest it, and then absorb those nutrients. So I like to say um, obtain nutrients here. And then let's take a look next at our urinary system. Urinary system consists of your kidney, your ureters, your bladder, and your urethra. The job here is really to remove metabolic waste products from the bloodstream, but then also help to regulate your fluid and your electrolyte levels. So here I have it summarized as excretion. And then finally, we have both the male and the female reproductive system. Clearly, they are different from each other, um, but both systems uh, have gonads, so testes for males and ovaries for females, where our sex cells, either our sperm or egg cells, are produced. Both systems have external genitalia, whether it's the penis in the male or vulva in the female. And we'll see that they have the same basic function, which is to make more humans, make, um, Make more humans is just a, a really great summary. You end your AMP2 semester looking at reproductive systems, so you'll talk about that one in more detail at that point.
And that's it for our first lecture.